You're online. Welcome to the 331-2021 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting at the Town of Raymond. The Zoning Board of Appeals will come to order. The board does have a quorum. I'm now going to do a roll call. Would members please state their name and position? Why don't we start with you, David? Uh, David Merch, a member of the Board of Appeals. Pat? Patricia B. In, member, Board of uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Joanne. Joanne Simpson, Vice Chair. And I'm Lynn Sorelli, Chairperson. And our this is a public Tom, perspective. Tom Hennessy has just joined us. Who has? I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Hennessy, candidate for the board. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chair if you are unable to see or hear. The board works from a published agenda and will be considering tonight's items in the following order. First, we're gonna uh, have an election of vice chairperson. Then we'll have a consideration for application of membership for Mr. Tom Hennessy. We move on to new business with a public hearing for Jeffrey Clark and Bethany Clark, requesting a variance to divide lot, creating one conforming and one non-conforming lot. Then we will move into code enforcement officer communications and then adjourn. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable, applicable ordinances or state law. After the board votes on the merits of each application, it will prepare a written notice of decision. Because the notice of decision may substantially affect any appeals rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regards to a specific application not leave until the board has completed its discussion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of the board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual rights to file any such appeal, you must be certain that the board's record evidences your appearance this evening in opposition and the basis for your opposition. All persons speaking, including representatives, oh somebody say that word for me, representatives of the applicant and member of the public are asked to stand at the microphone. Well, we don't have a microphone tonight. So please state your name and affiliation with the application for opposed neutral. All persons speaking shall address all remarks or questions to the chairman. The meeting is not over until the board has formally adjourned. Any discussion not included on the meeting agenda or accepted by the board is to be held until after adjournment or conducted outside of the meeting room. Well, I guess we'll get right into it. And um, because as, it, as we've said, uh, tonight is Joanne's la last meeting and that will leave us without a vice chair and with one person. And we'll still be one person short, actually. Um, I know from speaking to the members that um, Patricia's schedule doesn't allow her to uh, take this position at this time. Um, Joanne's gone. That only leaves David. Um, in, in my opinion, I think David would be a very good uh, candidate. Great. He's very familiar with the... Uh, with the rules and um, he's not afraid to speak up. So I, if does anyone can oppose that? I'll, I'll nominate David Merch. I'll, back, I'll second Western. that. Thank you, Pat. And David, uh, I believe the next step will be, I'm not sure what it is. What is the, do you have to see? Um, I can't think of your name in the town office or what happens now. I think we just vote on it, Len, and if we approve it, it, we're done. And then he needs to accept. Yeah, he right. needs to accept. <laughs> he needs to accept, <laughs> he needs to accept <laughs> nominations. <laughs> okay, let's vote. 
Everybody in favor of David, please raise your hand. There's no one opposed. Congratulations, David. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, for David. the record, I will officially accept. So. <laughs> okay, now the next item on our agenda is a consideration of application for board membership from Mr. Thomas Hennessy. Um, is he here? Yes, no. he is. I can't see. Okay. He's down here. He's he's identified as Marsha. I got him. Yeah, I'm on the line. It, it's under Marsha at the moment. Oh. Okay. Well, Tom, we've uh, I believe we've all seen and read your uh, application. Am I right, board board right. members? Everybody seen it? Yeah. Would you just uh, take a little time to tell us a, a little bit about yourself and why? You want to be on the board? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I've been in Maine as a resident for almost 40 years. Um, lived in uh, Raymond part-time for about nine and then an additional three full-time here. Um, and uh, love the town and I'm retired. So I'm looking for a volunteer position to try and help make things go smoother and better in the town of Rain. Do you have any uh, acquaintances on the board, professional or otherwise? I, uh, I do not have any acquaintances on the board. Um, I, I have a background in uh, both the Navy and uh, Bath Ironworks for 30, 40 years, depending on uh, between active and reserve duty and, and then full-time at Bath Iron Work. So I, I'm familiar with technical details. And I see you checked off on your application that your schedule does allow you to attend the regular meetings, which are normally on the last Tuesday of the month and site walks uh, a couple of weeks before the meeting. Yep, I'm good with all that. Okay. Does any other board members have any quest questions for Mr. Hennessy? Tom, I just think, I was gonna say thank you so much for applying. Um, it's always good to see more volunteers coming out. And I assume um, you don't have any concerns about you'll make decisions that could be popular, that might be unpopular, and you don't mind taking the time to actually review the ordinances for the town, you know, to, to help educate yourself as to what people are trying to do or requesting to do. Uh, I have no problem with any of that. I'm familiar with the previous code enforcement officers. I haven't directly met Alex um, and I'm welcoming any uh, training or assistance to get familiar with more rules and ordinances if I need to. Mary, there is a course that is put out at least annually, isn't it? Yes. Um, it's being held by Zoom. I think I sent it out, but I'll send it out again to everybody. Okay, I, I don't remember receiving any course, but uh, welcome to either. I drive by your office all the time, Mary. <laughs> I can stop in and get it if you don't get well, it any other way. I, I'll email it to you. It will give you all of the information and the login for Zoom and so on, how to register. And um, as I've instructed, if you're registering for it, just have them build the town. You don't have to pay anything. We'll we'll pick up the tab on that. Okay, thank you. So I'll get that out. All righty. And Tom, I just want to say that I I recognize your voice, and I know you've called in a few times, and you've always been polite and right to the point, and I thank you for that. Do we have to vote if we would like to? have Tom's application move on. I move to to um, approve the application of Tom Hennessy. I second that. Okay, let's vote to approve the application. Everybody in favor, raise their hand. And you are forwarding this with your recommendation to the select board approve and appoint him as a member, correct? Correct. <laughs> Mary, um, do you have any other applicants in the 
in the queue or? Not at present. Um, we seem to be running short, but we're going to keep trying. Okay. I will start the uh, new business portion and the public hearing of the meeting. On March 20th, we did a site walk of the property with Mr. Clark. Um, Joanne was not in attendance, but the rest of our, us were. Joanne? I was actually, Lynn. Yeah. I wasn't. Did yeah. I say Joanne? Said That's okay. <laughs> I, I, I know you were there. I thought I said Patricia wasn't no, there. Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> Um, now you, you made me lose my train of thought. Joanne, can you uh, read the notes from the site walk, please? Sure. Yeah. Um, as Len said, it was uh, site walk at 9 a.m. on 320 up at 3 Orchard Estate. Um, the ZBA members present were Len, Joanne, and David. And Tom Hennessy joined us to see what the process was like. And Jeff Clark um, walked us basically around the property. He showed us uh, the uh, you know, what he's applying for. Basically, he has a little over five acres, as I understand it. Um, there's a trailer on the front of the property. He'd like to divide the property so that he would then have a three acre uh, conforming lot and a two, I think, 0.05 acre non-conforming lot so he can build another principal structure on the back of the property on the new lot that he would create. Um, so basically he walked us around and showed us where the current boundaries are, where the proposed boundaries are, and um, just talked about that he wanted to continue renting out the trailer that's on the property and build himself a new new home. Thank you, Joanne. Yep. Let's move on to the application from Jeffrey Clark and and Bethany Clark. Um, <clears throat> your application, as Joanne said, you would like to construct a new home and to create one non-conforming 2.05 acre lot, which will encompass existing structures which are there. Um, would you take us through your application, please? And would you please include what's going to happen with the uh, right-of-way and um, with the present structures that are there, not necessarily the trailer, but that barn that's behind the trailer. So we're all clear on that. So uh, when you're done, Mr. and Mrs. Clark, then the board will ask you any questions they have. So go right ahead. Um, I'm a little confused on that. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I've never done this before. Um, okay. <laughs> the uh, trailer would still be a rental property. Um, and the grit garage I use for storage for uh, specific vehicles. Um, and basically the uh, personal property that we actually are gonna be moving out of our house here because we will be selling to build a new uh, house if possible. Um, and basically what we would like to do is separate uh, the property into a three acre buildable lot and a two point five, I guess, acre um, lot with existing structures on it. Okay. Um, Alex, I have a question for you. Can, is that what Mr. Clark's proposing? Is that something we can legally do? Yeah, so if you um, take a look at um, the land use ordinance, article six, if you look at Article 6B, uh, 1B, which says, uh, subject to the provisions of this ordinance to hear and grant or deny applications for variances from the terms of the land use ordinance, a variance may be granted for lot areas, lot coverage by structure, and setbacks. So uh, the ordinance does allow you to grant a variance for lot area. Thank you. When you sell your existing home, Mr. Clark, will that in any way affect the right of way? No, sir. Okay. Board members, what other questions do you have? 
I know you have some, Julian. I do. <laughs> um, under um, what Alex just read, the powers and duties, under the request for a variance, um, Jeffrey and Bethany, you need to, to meet the criteria for undue hardship, as I understand it. And um, you filled out your application and put a few things in there. So we're going to ask you some questions about those because you have to meet all four criteria. The first one is being, could you explain, it says the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless this variance is granted. Um, can you explain to us, us how that land cannot yield a reasonable return if it doesn't get split off into the, the two parcels? Well, we'll, we'll my, I'm having a problem with my headset. Um, we won't be able to move forward in our plans to uh, build a smaller house um, for us to live in. Um, because this house that we have now is just way too big for us and to take care of anymore. Our kids are all gone. Um, we just want to build something small to retire in. But you, let me ask you a quick question. If, if the trailer wasn't there, you could build a house on the property. Another, um, what you're proposing is having two principal structures, two primary residences on. Um, that's what I'm trying not to why, do. Right, that's why you're trying to divide it. But if the trailer wasn't there, you could have a pro, you know, you could build somewhere else on that piece of property. That's correct. Okay. Um, the second, uh, the second uh, requirement is that the need for the variance is because of the unique circumstances of the property, such as location of existing structures, the topographical, top, topographical features, and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. So the need, uh, would you say that the need is due to the unique circumstances of this property? Is there something that makes it unique? Uh, we've lived here for 22 years. We love the land. It's a beautiful spot. Um, it's, it's very unique. It's an old apple orchard, which we'd like to try to maintain to some extent. Um, hasn't been taken care of for years, um, but we would like to uh, maintain the, the beauty of the property. Okay. I'm just going to keep reading these. And for other board members, if you do have a question on any of these, please jump in. And I, I think, Joanne, when the questions are uh, finished, I think the board should go over each one and vote on it. Okay? Yeah. But continue. Um, I think there's actually five. Three, that granting of the variance will not change the essential character of the locality. Would you, uh, Jeffrey and Bethany, would you agree that um, if, you sub, if you divide this parcel, that it won't change the character? I agree it won't, yes. Okay, four, that the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. Um, the fact that this is um, not six acres, so you could have two legally conforming lots, is that due to something other than your actions or the previous owners? Not that I'm aware of. But you are the one that's requesting the, to Correct. split it off. Right? Correct. Okay. Um, and the last one, five, um, permitted variances run with the land and thus pass from one owner of the property to the next. That's just a comment. That's nothing um, that you have to address. So those, those are the four um, criteria of variance that the board members need to consider. Um, and just other comments that I have, Len, are that my understanding is I know with non-conforming lots, you can't, we can't make changes to make the non-conforming lots more non-conforming. So this is where I'm struggling is we're taking a conforming less than six acres, five, little over five acre lot and creating one conforming lot and a non-conforming lot, which I don't believe we can do. Um, or I, I would like to discuss that. I, I'm not sure how we can do that. And two, I know if it wasn't divided, we can't have more than one principal structure on a lot. So I understand that's why he's trying to do it. So those are just my my comments. So Patricia, do you have any questions for Mr. Uh, Clark? Yeah. How about you, David? 
Yeah, I, I do have a few. Um, thank you, Len. So when we were there for the site walk, there was a, uh, a property out back with a house on it. Is, does that property belong to you or does that belong to someone else? That is a separate house. It belongs to uh, Donna Hildreth. Okay. And when we first came onto the property, the, the, uh, the mobile home was on the right-hand side. If we're looking from the road, there was another property with a house to the, the left. That is, that is your house, correct? That is correct. Okay. And, and um, what's the acreage on that property? 2.5. Okay. And do you have any other properties that abut the parcel that you'd like to, to split? Um, I believe uh, we don't know. Donna Hildreth abuts the property and a, what's his name? Flanagan, Flanagan. abuts on the opposite side. Okay. But you yourselves um, don't have any other properties? Abutting? abutting no. No. Okay. Um, I think, I think that's it for the moment, Len. Thanks, David. You still all set, Patricia? Yeah, my concern is that we're creating the non-conforming. And uh, as far as in the future, somebody building something like moving the mobile home off of the site and looking to build a, a, a you know, stick stick built home I think I think we have to discuss that at this point if you want to board let's go through the uh, the criteria and, and, and talk about and vote on each one Len, Len, I'm assuming, I'm sorry, I'm assuming we don't have anyone calling in for or opposed or anything. Well, no, I think Mary would have said something, but yeah. is anyone opposed? Have we, have we opened the um, public hearing yes. yet? Yes, we have. Okay. I have nobody calling in. Thanks, okay. Len. All right. <clears throat> okay. The first... The first criteria is the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Um, and their response to that is by limiting decreasing square footage on the mobile home in order to build a new house, thus having two houses on the existing lot for the mobile home would be less rentable and less income yielding, decreasing the income derived currently. Now, I'm not sure that that shows that that land cannot uh, be used for something else. Um, any thoughts, board members? I, I concur with what, what Len's comment is. That, that's um, one of the problems that I have that um, the land, it, it is to Jeffrey's point, it's a beautiful piece of property. Uh, the birds back there were wonderful, everything. And it's, um, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's, it sounds like more of a wish to keep the rental income coming in and have another home there. And I understand that. Um, but it doesn't sound, I, I don't, I don't see any reason why the property couldn't yield. For example, if he sold the property as is, you know, the property obviously would, um, would not have any problem selling like that. So uh, just because it's not divided into two different parcels, I don't believe that um, that that would not by not doing it, it would not not allow for a reasonable return. If that makes sense, uh, I agree with you, Joanne. How about other board members? Do you have any comments on this criteria, David or Pat? Um, yeah, I would have to agree with with both uh, you, Len, and Joe. Uh, Joanne, that, uh, you know, looking at this, especially when it says a reasonable return, uh, that I think that's kind of the key word in this for me is, is a reasonable turn. So the, I believe the lot in itself, it is, it is a beautiful lot. And I do think that sold as a, 
uh, a five acre lot or used as a five acre lot, it would certainly result in a, in a reasonable return uh, without having to, to split it. So uh, yeah, I, I have to agree again with, with Joanne. It's like, it would, it would be, a, it would be, I understand for the clerks that it would be nice to have the, the two, the two properties and be able to take in the income for the, for the mobile home uh, as a rental, but to, to need the need to split the lot in order to yield a reasonable return. Um, I, I'm not sure that the, the, the reasons provided by the clerks uh, meet the, meet the need. Yes. Anyone else? I do agree with uh, everybody on that because um, as far as building another dwelling on the five acres, that's still possible. Renting the mobile home is still possible. And it sounds like there's another uh, building also, a garage that's uh, able to be rented. It, so they can be rented. No, no, no. no okay. I thought rented. you said something, but I, I, I stand corrected. Yeah. I thought you indicated there was another type of uh, dwelling. It is for storage purposes only. Oh, okay. All right. But it sounds like the mobile home, regardless of a, a, uh, a, a home being built on the five acres, that that could still be rented. I think just to clarify that point, Patricia, me, you know, and Alex, you can jump in if I don't have this correct, but you can't have more than one principal structure on one lot. So in this particular zone, and, and it probably will clear up what he was talking about in that um, description, you can have an accessory residential apartment with a single family dwelling, but it is limited to a certain size. So that's why he's talking about reducing the size of the mobile home, because it's currently too large to, to be an accessory apartment. So the only way he could do that, have the house in the back and have the rental in the front would be to reduce the size of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you yep. for that clarification. Let's take, let's take a vote with the board, just to be clear. Uh, all those in favor of uh, granting the variance uh, under uh, rule number one, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay. <clears throat> the next point we, we should talk about is the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. This, their response is the lot size is currently lot not large enough to have two full-size dwellings without decreasing the overall square footage on the mobile home. Anyone want to comment on that? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure the lot size itself is unique. Um, that's actually a bigger lot than a lot of a lot of them. Um, but the existing it's actually the size of the existing structure, being the trailer mobile home that's on there, um, is what's causing, causing I guess, the need to request a variance to split them off. Um, it's not the general conditions of the neighborhood, but that's a tough one. Are there any other comments by the board and how they're reading that one? I mean, I don't know if I don't know if we say it's unique because it has an existing mobile home or trailer on it and at the size of it, and he wants to build another home on the property. I'm just not sure how unique that is, but well, I, I read that um, proper application of this would require something actually unique about the property. For example, a lot with an odd shape than other area lots, and do not and does not have maybe a good lot for a variance. I don't know if this lot is actually unique. I, 
In my opinion, I don't think so. I think it's just not big enough is the problem, right? Yeah, it, uh, it yeah. seems like perhaps the uniqueness is the need or the desire to have uh, two full-size dwellings on the property. Mm -hmm. See, Matt, I don't know that that's the uniqueness to the property. That's the uniqueness to the, the situation. Right. I would agree with that, David. Yeah. Me too. Any other questions? Uh, from the new kid on the block, uh, when did it become a rule to have the three acre versus something smaller on that type of uh, lot? That, I mean, that's what rural year? district, right, Juan? I really can't answer that. I don't know. Does I believe it? under um, this was a rural district. Um, so Article 4C makes it an R, rural district, and the minimum lot area shall be three acres according to the ordinances. Um, I think Tom's asking when did that come into play? Yeah, is it is it before or after um, Jeff and Bethany bought this entire plot of land, I guess? Uh, it would be well before. It looks like it might have been 1987. But I'm not sure that didn't, um, the, the lot's five acres though. So um, even if even if lot sizes were smaller at the time, that lot was five acres, correct? So it's not, it's not like the lot was already split. You know what I mean? So it wasn't already two and then went to three. So, I, I guess my question, just for clarity, is if if they bought it with the intention of someday splitting it, you know, was it two, two and a half back when they bought it? And now we're in this dilemma here. I don't believe that would matter what their intentions were. It's what it actually was at the time the ordinance went into effect. Is that correct, Alex? Uh, yeah, I mean, if they had purchased this lot in the 60s, for example, um, unfortunately, they have to play by the rules of today. Um, I, I think, Jeff, you, you just purchased this not too long ago, correct? We, was, we inherited it. Yeah, how long ago did you inherit it? Two years ago. Okay. Yeah, so... I, I, I mean, I'm just had, wondering, I guess I'm just wondering if there's some kind of grandfathering thing. Not in this situation. Thanks for clearing that up. I think I think Tom. I don't know if it helps just just for understanding going forward. Is if if it were a non-conforming two-acre lot, um, you know, from s several years ago, then that could be maintained and continued. But it it never was a two-acre lot, so that's why if okay. that if that helps. Yeah. I'm just learning the rules. No, 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 good question, good question. Let's vote on the second criteria. The need for a variance is, is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All those in favor of granting the variance based on this criteria, please raise their hand. All those opposed, please raise their hand. Okay, the next point is the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Their response is the request for a variance would not alter the ex essential character of the locality. It would remain rural residential. I, I, again, I, I don't know if that's the answer that we're looking for here. Uh, Anybody else? I, I don't believe that um, dividing the lots would change the character of the, the locale there. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't personally see a problem with number three. I think they'll maintain. They would maintain the character if they were able to get the variance. 
See, I, I, I look at this and, and thinking that it's essentially a split for the purpose of two primary residential. So essentially now we've got two properties, uh, one of which is non conforming lot size now, which has a primary residence on it. So I look at that in the sense that the, the locality is intending to have three acre lots. And now we're allowing, you know, a two acre lot to, to for a primary residence. So for me at reading this, it would be changing the essential character. Interesting. I agree with David on that one. I do too. A good point, David. All right. No other questions. Let's vote on number three. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. All those that believe that is true, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Okay. Number four, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the appellate or a prior owner. The response is, this is the size of the lot and it was never intended to be split by prior owners. Um, I'm not really sure what the, the answer means. Uh, anybody else have thoughts on this one? Well, well the he, the, I'm sorry, go ahead, Patricia. I was just going to say, he, uh, the, uh, the clerks it inherited it two years ago. Um, I don't know how long it was owned before that, but if it was going to be split, it would have been split by then. If there mm -hmm. was an intention to do so. Yeah, and, I, and to go along with, I agree with Patricia, and that the hardship here is that, again, he doesn't have enough um, lot size to create two conforming lots and also that the trailer is too large um, to have two, two um, structures on one lot. So um, that's why I just feel like the applicants are creating the hardship based on their needs. So. Any other comments before we vote on this? Number four, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the appellant or prior owners. All those that feel that is true, please raise their hand. All those opposed, please raise their hand. Well, it looks like that uh, on all the hardship clauses, Everyone is on the board is opposed uh, four to zero on, e on every one of them. Um, I guess the only thing left to do is to make a motion to whether uh, to proceed or approve this variance or not. Len, can I just get one confirmation? Sure, go ahead. Out there. Go ahead. Um, I, I just want to make sure um, we have the listing of the four hardships. Is it in order for us to even approve this, is it a requirement that all four must be met? Or is it one, at least one of the four must be met? It's my understanding that all four need to be met, but I want to That's confirm. That's my understanding that. also, that all four have Same to be met. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Correct. Yep. So even if we approved one, two, and three, and then we we said no to number four, then that sounds like it would be same result as if we said all four, no to all four. So, okay, thanks, I'm, they clarified, thank you. That's okay, This, these four criteria are, are very strict. Uh, so we have to put extra thought and thinking into it. Yep. Uh, can I get a second on my motion or, or no? I'll second. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Okay.
<laughs> the board votes to not approve the variance for Mr. and Mrs. Clark at this time. All those in favor, raise your hand. The variance is not approved. Thank you. Are there any other comments before we move on? Next order on the agenda is code enforcement officer communications. That's you, Alex. Yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to communicate. I just wanna say thank you to Joanne and good luck. And if you happen to come back to Raymond, we expect to be back on the ZBA if there's an open <laughs> position. I doubt that's gonna happen, but wishful thinking, I guess. Variant. But uh, good luck, thank you. Um, and uh, that's all I got. Thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate that. It's been a pleasure to work with you. I mean that. Thank you. Before we adjourn, um, I had sent something out to the board members saying that, uh, you know, and we obviously knew that this is your last meeting, Joanne. And, uh, I asked uh, if, if anybody had some final words that now would be the time. Uh, I'll go first if you want. Joanne, you're going to be very missed on the board. That's that's a given. The community, whether they know it or not, will be missing you also because, in my opinion, you have the most compassion for the community than most. Your ability to interpret the ordinances is outstanding. And you are not afraid to ask provoking questions. And on a personal note, I'm very moved that I've gotten to know you. Anybody else? Thank you very much, Juan. You're welcome. Go ahead, Sam. I want to definitely say that you will be missed. You've, you've put your heart and soul into everything you've done with the town. I can see, I just, your face when you go to vote on the board, you challenge everybody and your insight to the uh to all of the uh the rules and regulations and we really knocked around this whole variance what is a variance <laughs> what is a variance so you made us all you know challenged everyone on that one and uh making good changes to a process that needed it so but you're going to be missed and i enjoyed uh spending time with you on the board thank you Thank you very much. And I, uh, yeah, and I will say that, uh, you know, certainly we haven't been on the board together for that long, but I have in the past been on the other side and I've always appreciated your professionalism uh, and how that, uh, your fairness and how you looked at things. And so I appreciated that then. I certainly appreciate it now as being a board member. And I also appreciate you just asking me, you know, a number of months ago while we we're doing election stuff uh, to consider uh, applying. So thank you for that. Thank you, David. Thank you guys. I just, I do want to say thank you to all of you and everyone needs to know that these members of the board do work their hearts out to try to do the right thing. Every time someone comes to this board and makes a request, it's not easy. Um, it's not easy to interpret any of these ordinances and thank you, Alex, for helping us so much and Mary behind the scenes, but I do, I applaud each and every one of you. You guys are awesome and you're gonna do a great job in that. Len, you're doing a wonderful job taking you know, the chair, so. Thanks. It's appreciated. Well, let's give Joanne a hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second on that? I second. Okay, the meeting is now adjourned.